folks. Welcome to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here. We're going to have a great show today. We got Dr. Dave Rethorse from Beef Health Solutions, which is a local veterinary clinic that also does some, some consulting nationally on preventative health. We're going to talk about calf scours, prevention, and treatment. Captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine. Your stem cells, your health, your life. Dr. Rethorse, welcome to the show. As always, good to be here, Dan. <laughs> Folks, this is my good friend, Dr. Dave Rethorst, who is a veterinarian and is the owner and operator of Beef Health Solutions. And, and Dr. Dave, just kind of talk to me a little bit about what your company's doing and, and the services that you're providing. Well, Dan, we're providing traditional veterinary services to an extent in the Manhattan area and some outlying areas, but as you well know, my mantra is prevention yep. and what we can do to prevent things. You know, uh, you know. One well, of my favorite slogans recently is because nutrition matters. Yeah. And you know, the health of our calves starts when we turn that bull out. It starts at conception. Yep. And and what we do during pregnancy impacts the lifetime health and performance of that calf. And we don't need to be using more vaccines and more antibiotics as a crutch. We need to figure out where we're messing up in management. And so that's what I'm trying to do is, you know, yeah, I'm providing traditional services and, you know, testing bulls and preg checking cows, but, but I want to get back to, you know, what are we doing to prevent things? Let's cut down on our antibiotic use. Let's improve our animal welfare. You bet. Well, you've always done a, a great job with it. You, you, I mean, your leadership within the veterinary profession and the care that you provide clients, it's going to be fun to, to walk with you and, and grow this company and, and watch where it goes because, it, folks, it's going to go big, big places. We're going to talk about calf scours, which kind of, you kind of let right us in right there. into this, and, Absolutely. and and you know you know just talk a little bit about some of the things that that when you're general in general you know we have different types of bugs that cause calf scours, right? Right. We we've got bacteria, we've got viruses, uh, parasites, parasites. You know all sorts of things cause calf scours, but but usually that's an indication we've got something wrong in the management system. You know, if, if we dig deep enough, we'll find something wrong. But, you know, we've got E. coli, and, you know, E. coli can show up in a 24-hour-old calf, you know, and, and extend on for a couple weeks. Our viruses, rota and coronavirus, don't show up till 7 to 10 to 14 days of age and are protracted just because it destroys the epithelium of the gut enough they can't resorb fluids. We've got salmonella that's becoming a big thing. So we've got all kinds of bugs out there, but it, it's an indication of something else going on. And when you're looking at that calf that's got scours, what are, what are some of the things that you use to kind of grade the clinical signs on the severity? Uh, depression, you know, if, if they're really depressed, dehydration, if that eye sunk back in their head, uh, just attitude, have they nursed, is, is mama's bag full, and things like that. So so not only the diarrhea, but depression, anorexia, weakness, Absolutely. just general malaise and things like that. And if we do that, then we got to get them in. Folks, one of the things we're going to talk about here with Dr. Dave is he talks about prevention and moving forward. We're going to talk about some diagnostics next. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. Watch Ag AM in Kansas online at agamincansas.com. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet, 
Soil is the life of a farm, and for 25 years, SureCrop Liquid Crop Nutrition has helped growers produce abundant quality crops while preserving and improving the soils they steward. SureCrop offers complete soil and plant analysis with cropping recommendations, delivery direct to your on-farm storage, and quality crop nutrition custom blended for your field. Choose SureCrop for the assurance of excellence for your soil. Call today or visit their website for more information. Ag Promo Source is a unique group of marketing specialists with one mission, help your ag business grow. Each affiliate has their own area of expertise and they work together to bring you advice, products, and services. To get started, visit agpromosource.com. Ag Promo Source, together we grow. This segment is brought to you by Santa Fe Trail Meats and Overbrook or visit us online at sftmeats.com. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Dave Rethorst, and, and we're friends and colleagues and, and veterinarians. And Dr. Dave now has a company uh, providing traditional veterinary services along with some of the preventative medicine services for, for cow herds uh, locally and cow herds uh, around the country. Beef Health Solutions is the name of that. And Dr. Dave, talk to me about, okay, so when we get into a wreck with, with E. coli, Salmonella, Rota, Corona. What are some things that you're going to do as a veterinarian as far as diagnostics? Uh, to to what do you what kind of samples are we going to send in, and 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 what kind of tests are we going to ask for? Okay, first of all, on diagnostics, I want to get a good history of the herd. I, w I want to see what the herd looks like, what the environment looks like, and then then we're going to you know obviously if we've got dead calves, we're going to get good specimens, get them into the diagnostic lab, get some culture work Send done. Send the whole calf? If you're, if you're close to the diagnostic lab, you know, a whole calf works well. If, if you're not, you know, learn how to do a good job of taking samples. You know, good fresh samples, isolated gut loops, swabs, uh, fixed tissues, lymph so, nodes. And see, for me, okay, so if I'm a cow-calf practitioner, and I got scours going on. I have no problem just loading up myself and taking that calf to the oh, dealer. I mean, a half day drive or whatever is nothing compared to the way I care for those right. kids. So and, it's, and and it's you know as, as our friend Dr. Spare just said, we're we're affecting the livelihood of, of those producers, and we have to show them that we care. So if it takes hauling a calf to the D lab, do it. Yeah, get it in there. So so. You know, one of the things that, that you mentioned was, you know, pr history and premise inspection. And, and folks, you, we can't diagnose these things over the phone or over the email. As a veterinarian, you have to get on the ground, right? Boots on the ground. Absolutely is essential on getting on top of these problems. And so when you're <clears throat> having that scourge problem, getting your veterinarian out to the farm sooner rather than later to be someone that can give you a second set of eyes, timing is probably as fast as, as neonates can, can, can succumb to these diseases, timing is of the essence. And so staying on top of it, working on preventative measures, but getting someone there soon rather than later is important. Absolutely. Um, Dr. Dave, let's talk about some of the, the different samples that you might, after you, send, after you get your samples collected, what are some things that, that diagnostic labs are going to do? Okay, they, they can, you know, probably the most common is what we call a culture and sensitivity for bacterial scars. You know, find out what bugs there, do a sensitivity on it, find out what antibiotic it's sensitive to. And hopefully one, it's one that's labeled for beef cattle. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that's important. <laughs> no, always, always helps. Uh, you know, with, with Fresh fecal samples, they can do virology studies uh, and, you know, and see do we have rota virus there, do we have coronavirus there, uh, and, you and know, BVD, yep. all sorts of samples we can. And a lot of times what we find, is, like you said, is, is secondary to, to the immunosuppression. Right. And, and it's the immunosuppression the mismanagement or something not quite right in management is the underlying cause of our scours. Cool. When we come back, we're going to talk about how we treat calves with calf scours with Dr. Dave Rethorst and Beef Health Solutions. Hi, 
I'm Rex Ann Strew, veterinarian in Western Iowa. I have a veterinary clinic and uh, started doing stem cell therapy on dogs in August of 2014. And after the first two dogs, after three weeks, I saw such dramatic results. I said, hey, I have arthritis. I have joints really need this help. Where can I go to get this done? I had stem cell therapy done in November of 2014 on my finger joints, my hip, and the ball of my left foot, uh, all of which I'd had real severe problems with. Saw a pretty dramatic uh, improvement in a short amount of time. I would certainly recommend that somebody don't wait until I'm in the position that I was in with the d damage already done to my joints. But I encourage veterinarians to use it for their animals, and I encourage anybody who sees this video, if you have need, get in contact with these people because this is a phenomenal place to have this done. Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego is driven by the spirit of American ingenuity. Come in for a new Chevrolet car, truck, or SUV. If we don't have exactly what you want, we'll find it for you. And we also have a great selection of used cars. We make sure you have an easy, fun, and transparent sales experience that saves you time and money. But if you want high-pressure salesmen and hours spent in the finance office, you'll just have to go elsewhere. Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego. We're making car buying great again. The BQA Tip of the Day, sponsored by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica Inc. Howdy, this is Kurt Pate with your Tip of the Day. When we're using dogs, working cattle, the thing is, is they're great if you have control of them. So I'll go ahead and, uh, I, for me, it's real important to be able to control your dog, at least with a down. So my dog, I can always down him and get him to stay. I like to have him where he'll come behind me when I, when I ask him to come behind. Taco here. Come here, Tuckle. Come behind. Come behind. And stay back behind me until I ask him to go, and then I'll send him to the cattle. Get ahead. Hunt him up. And if you can do those things and stop him and bring him back, at least you have a dog you can control and keep the cattle from getting too wild. No matter where, no matter why, the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University is committed to providing quality patient care to animals and exceptional customer service to their owners. From routine checkups to emergency and specialty care, our world-renowned specialists and experienced professionals are here to discover, to teach, and to heal. Let us know. How can I help? How can we help? This Medford, New Jersey school bus runs on biodiesel, and so do these. In fact, all of these buses run on clean-burning biodiesel, which is great because the more we use biodiesel in our heavy-duty vehicles, the less carbon pollution in our air. Think how great it would be if more of our school buses ran on biodiesel. More biodiesel, less carbon pollution. More is less. Biodiesel, America's advanced biofuel. This segment brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. Progress powered by Kansas farmers. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Dave Rethorst, who's a veterinarian and owner and operator of Beef Health Solutions, which provides uh, traditional veterinary bovine care along with preventative medicine consultation for you and your herd. Dr. Dave, we get a calf, we've got calf scours, we've got the diagnostics, we, we have an understanding now of, of what's, what's going to uh, help this calf heal itself. What, what, what are some things that you implore or employ when, when we treat these calves? First and foremost, Dan, is we've got to get these calves rehydrated. It's the dehydration that kills 95% of the calves. It, it isn't the, the bug. It's, you know, like on rota and corona, virus scours, you know, it's the fact that those viruses destroy all the thousands, millions of little fingers of absorptive service in that gut. They can't absorb fluids, so we, we've got to stay after them diligently with fluids, get them rehydrated, uh, and, you know, use antibiotics more or less as a secondary thing. I, I'm a big fan of, of oral fluids. If, if we catch these calves early, get oral fluids in them, do it two or three times a day, use the proper fluids, 
you know, we don't need to use the IV fluids, but if they get really down and depressed, then we have to use IV fluids on okay, them. Okay, so talk to me about oral fluids. What are some, some things that, I mean, if you go into the Orslins or go into a veterinary clinic, um, pick up one of these electrolyte uh, fluid mixes for the calves? Yeah, <laughs> some of those are, you know, I won't say some of them are poor, but there's some that are better than others. Okay. You know, uh, one of my old favorites, and I hate yeah. to mention. No, you can mention. It, it, you know, Resorb is a really good one. Uh, you know, some some of the others have, in in my opinion, too much dextrose in them and will actually prolong the scours because that extra dextrose is pulling fluids into the gut. Uh, there's one I've been using the last couple of years, and I, I'm blank on the name of it right now, but it's kind of an orange-colored fluid when you mix it up, and it, it's really a well-balanced fluid and, and does a really nice job on these kids. So when we think about fluids, and, and again, oral fluids, you say two to three times a day, and, and probably going to use a, a calf feeder to yes. get it down, yep. get it down, make sure that they get it. Um, how much are you recommending that we give? I like to use two quarts two to three times a day. Okay. And, and remember, folks, if you want to know how dehydrated that calf is, just a simple skin tent, you pull that skin back, it should snap back into place. If you pull the tent skin on that calf and it stays and then slowly goes back, that calf's dehydrated and, and needs, needs fluid needs, help. Needs some fluids. And, and if many times a depression, uh, you know, in, in and of itself is an indication of fluids. You know, we've got some endotoxic shock going on. And so the big thing on treatment, get them in a dry, warm place, get them on fluids, and then if there is a bacterial infection, an antibiotic that, that is effective, whether it's in a bolus or in an in a injection, utilize that. That's yeah. pretty much our, and then we're and, looking for, for endotoxemia as well. Right, and, and, and I like to use the injectables. I don't like to use oral antibiotics because I want to take care of the systemic infection, but I don't want to mess up the flora in that gut any more than it already is. So some of these some of these bacterial infections can go away outside the gut, and so we have to treat the the endotoxemia. So water soluble antibiotic that that uh, that. But be be sure to work with your local veterinarian. He knows the bugs. He knows the drugs. He knows your geography. When we come back, we're going to talk with Dr. Dave about one of his passions: preventing calf scours. KFRM is one of the largest farm radio stations in the nation, dedicated to informing and entertaining rural listeners from northern Oklahoma to southwestern Nebraska. You can catch KFRM in many ways. Of course, 550 on the AM dial, streaming at KFRM.com, or on your smartphone by going to the TuneIn Radio app, or on Ag AM in Kansas on Tuesdays, and Facebook every day of the week. KFRM, tune us in. You'll be glad you did. This Meet the Future Veterinarian is brought to you by Zuprivo. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. As the son of a dairy veterinarian in Wisconsin, Adlai Schuler spent much of his teenage years in the milking parlor and calf shed. Time with his dad inspired him to become a veterinarian, and his later work on large and small dairy operations solidified his career path. With his veterinary degree and advanced training in dairy nutrition, Adlai brings added value to the farmers he works with. Broadband has become as important to us as highways. That is why Doc Talk is teaming up with NTCA, the Rural Broadband Association, and rural broadband companies like Blue Valley Telecommunications in fighting for quality broadband access through the program Smart Rural Communities. I don't think we have any idea what's coming in the future. I couldn't have imagined five years ago what we're doing today. So in two years, I would guess there's things we can't imagine that we're going to be doing. To learn more, visit ntca.org forward slash smart or bluevalley.net. Healthy cows start with the new Hired Hand Automatic Livestock Sprayer. Rancher invented to provide an efficient alternative to pour-on and injectable parasite management systems. The portable design allows cattle to treat themselves head to hoof. Strategic device placement with pass-through activation technology takes the stress out of parasite treatment for cattle and the rancher, leaving more time to tend to other vital tasks on the farm. To learn more, visit cowsprayer.com. The new Hired Hand makes healthy cows easy. 
This segment brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. This is Dr. Dan Thompson here with my friend and colleague, Dr. Dave Rethorse, who's a veterinarian and owner of Beef Health Solutions, which is a company that provides traditional veterinary health care for your herds and also provides preventative medicine consultation, animal welfare consultation, uh, food safety, many different things that, that will help you and your herd uh, put yourself in a position to be ahead of the curve. Uh, Dr. Dave, when we talk about uh, preventing calf scours, kind of talk me through, if, if I was a producer sitting there and you're saying, hey, let's talk about calf scour prevention. You know, obviously, vaccinate, you know, it starts with that cow. It, it starts with the cow and, and I'll, I'll start with vaccine and then I'll digress a moment. Okay. You know, traditionally when we think about preventing, we want, we jump to a vaccine and there's several good vaccines out there, you know, take care of the E. coli, the rota and coronavirus. Sometimes we throw in a clostridial for, for the enterotoxemia. There's places that we have to use a salmonella vaccine. But all that aside, that prevention starts when that cow is pregnant, as I said earlier, because nutrition matters. You know, it, uh, how we feed that cow, our nutrition program, protein, energy, trace mineral during pregnancy affect that calf's immune system. Uh, the amount of protein in that cow's diet affects that calf's ability to absorb colostrum. Uh, it, it all starts there and, and we, if we've got an ongoing scars problem year after year after year, you know, we need to go back and, and look at the whole program, not just throw a vaccine at it because, well, we, we got a rotavirus last year, we need to add a rota. Well, yeah, we probably need to add a rota, but we need to look at, at what else we can do. Yep, and so when we look at nutrition and vaccination of the cow, we're also looking at the development of the immune system of the calf in utero and then the immune system of that calf due to the, the proper colostrum intake. And so, so cow nutrition, colostrum. What about uh, uh, after the calf is born? What are some things we can do to set that calf well, up for you success? Know, the, well, first of all, ensure colostrum intake. You know, a study up at Meat Animal Research Center a number of years ago, calves that do not get adequate colostrum are like 3.5 times more likely to get sick as babies and six times more likely to get sick before weaning. So work on that colostrum. Then we can look at things like the Sandhills calving system where, you know, after 10 days of calving in a pasture, we move the pregnant cows out. We leave the pairs in that pasture. That way those pregnant cows are calving on clean ground. We cut down on the environmental contamination of those calves when they're born. Uh, another one of my pet peeves is, is biosecurity. You know, we lose a calf off of a first calf heifer or a second calf heifer and we run to the neighbors or we run to the dairy or we run to the sale barn and we buy a calf to put on these cows because we don't want them to run dry. You know, all you have to do is go through one wreck where you see somebody bring in a salmonella with a calf that they bought so that heifer didn't run dry and you'll let an awful lot of heifers run dry rather than bring in salmonella or some foreign E. coli or a BVD. Well, great information folks. Great man here, great veterinarian. Be sure to, to work with your local veterinarian and if you want to know more about what we do here at Doc Talk, you can find us on the web at www.doctalktv.com. Dr. Dave Rethorse with Beef Health Solutions. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson. Thanks for watching Doc Talk, and I'll see you down the road. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com.